Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I'm super excited for today's show. I'm back with my co-host, Charlene Hess. Welcome, Charlene. Thank you, Cornelia. I'm excited to be here with you again. Yes, and I love the topic that you and I are talking about today because we're talking about the the uh, part four of living on purpose, the theme that we've been um, that you've been guiding us into over the last four shows. And I just want to tell all the listeners that if they haven't listened to the past three shows to go to your website at charlenehess.com. And where exactly is, are the um, archives of the show listed on your under media. So when you go to charlenehess.com, you'll go to empowerment coach. And when you go to that page, you'll see a um, tab for media and you'll go there and be able to look at it. And then also you can just go to my YouTube channel as well. Um, Charlene Hess on YouTube. And I have all of my transformation, um, talk radio videos are all on there. Wonderful. And peep and you can also go to my website, corneliestephanie.com and they can look under media under radio and everything is listed there because it's just really helpful um, for, for you to go back and look at some of the other shows. Cause they're also, they have so much value. They have so much content. They're so inspiring. And mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're always including tips and tricks and energy work and everything that we can do to assist you to move into a higher vibrational way of living and being. And that's really what this show is all about because we're modeling what it looks like to live heaven on earth. And so that's, that's what we're doing. And that's why I'm excited because today's topic is rewriting the script and rewriting your story, not the story that you chose when, um, you incarnated here, because when you incarnated here, you, um, you wanted to overcome a different story. And so first it was really about transcending the victimhood, transcending the, the, the wound itself within and now it's about coming from a place from an empowered place. Like what is it that you want to create from this place of empowered creation, the empowered creator that you are. And that's why I'm looking forward to us talking about this today, Charlene. But first I, I got to tell you, Oh my God, talk about, so I'm a radio host, one thing, but I'm also a peace activist. Okay. And so I just, I thought it was so interesting because it's like, do peace activists get angry? Ask me that question. Do peace activists get angry? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do you know why? Tell me why. Oh my gosh. So today there was another shooting. There was mm -hmm. another shooting and this shooting took place in Santa Fe, Texas. Eight people, eight children lost their lives. And that pisses me off. That just really pisses me off at this stage in the game of our evolution. Why this is still happening. I just don't get it. This is the kind of stuff. This is the reason why you and I both have become, uh, educators in the field of emotional processing. And I, I, I created a wholeness program and I, I created a coaching program and I coach others into emotional processing so that people can learn how to process their emotions because people act on their emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I, if I hadn't already done a show on this back in March, when I was extremely charged for the school shooting that took place in, um, Florida, um, I would be doing a video on this today, but I, I want to play a clip from the, uh, the, the video that I did, uh, in March. Carter, would you play that? Clip? 
what makes someone pick up a gun. And if guns were not available, and if someone wanted to hurt someone, kill more than one person, what would they do? They would make a bomb or they would use a bomb because they are so driven by the power of their emotion, which is causing them to take actions in a negative way because they have not yet learned how to process what they are feeling. They're acting out on their pain, as does everyone when they emotionally react to an event that triggers and angers them. If all people took responsibility for their own anger, their thoughts, their actions, and their feelings, we would have peace, world peace instantly today if all people knew how to do this one thing, and that's emotionally process that when that trigger happens and you that inner bullet goes off and you're, you're, you want to uh, get that anger out of your body instead of using the fist, instead of using the voice, instead of using uh, a weapon to harm someone, to, to really get the anger out of your body first and then really sit down and process what this is about for you, what you're releasing, what it is that you're letting go of. Yeah. So that, that, that was, that, that's one thing. Mm. Really, I really feel like, you know, the emotional processing needs to be in every doctor's office. It needs to be in every school system. It needs to be, because it's not, you know, guns is one thing, but it's, it's not the gun that's going to go off by itself. It's not the bully that's going to, uh, it's the bully that we, we want to educate. It's the wounded person that we want to educate. And this is part of the reason, this is the main reason of why I wrote my book, because I just, I'm very passionate about um, educating people on how to process their emotions. And Charlene, you are a wholeness practitioner. You're a mm -hmm. certified life coach through my program. And this is the work that you do. And I just want to send my love and all of us, we just want to send our love and our prayers to yes. the victims that have lost their lives um, and the families um, that have been affected by this horrendous crime. And, and this is the part that I just don't understand why we're still why we're still in this state of our evolution. Mm -hmm. We're so awake when we're so aware when we have the tools that are so readily available to us, and why this kind of stuff still is happening. And I, yeah, this morning I really had to do a lot of deep breathing because it's this is the this is the way for me to uh, release my own charge around it. But part of what this is showing us is to use our passions, to use what it is that we're passionate about, what it is that drives us, what it is that motivates us, and show up in a way that benefits humanity. Show up in a way that where we can offer our, our tools and our gifts and share the things that, that can support us in our evolution as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to share one more piece. There was a, there's a clip. Uh, uh, an excerpt out of my book, Peace, the Flip Side to Anger, how I healed my body and my uh, life with the power of my emotions and how you can too. And Carter, would you play that clip, please? Take a look at all the anger that's being expressed right now in the world, in your household, in your relationships, your work environment around the world. So many people are feeling angry inside their bodies about the world that we that we live in. People point their fingers, take on the victim role, and do not accept responsibility for their own parts. Deeply rooted, unacknowledged anger is the number one cause for the war. The violence that's happening could end if people knew how to release their suppressed underlining emotions. The violence could end if people stopped blaming or projecting onto other people and situations. Violence doesn't happen by itself. Violence happens by one person like a gunman walking into a church or any other building, killing innocent people out of rage. And that rage is emotion. That rage is anger. That, that rage is fueled. It's a powerful force. Who knows how long that, that energy has been held within the body? The solution is simple. Is it comes down to education, creating awareness about the energy within our bodies that needs to move. 
The solution lies in educating how to move that energy in a co- in a conscious way, in a, in a responsible way. Yeah. So here we are again, you know, in March, Charlene, this video was, was made, you know, mm-hmm. school shootings. And, um, and then here this morning, I was preparing for our show here today and I was like really all, all excited and everything. And then all of a sudden I saw on the iPhone, cause I don't, I don't have the, I don't have a TV. And so I saw on the iPhone school shooting. And then next thing you know, I, I went down this complete, you know, and I yes. was, all revved up and and um so part of what i want to share today is that you know we're we're constantly being bombarded with so much stuff and there's never been a greater time than right now to learn how to process your emotions right yes. and yes. so i i know that also you too have uh, are, are dealing with something today that just came out of the blue and this is also part of learning how to deal with whatever it is that life is, 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 you know, presenting to us. But when we're not, when we're coming from an emotional charged place, um, it makes it a lot more difficult to navigate. Uh, these right. Situations. Right. So, do you right. want to share with us what, what happened with you? Yeah. So we're, I'm going to, we're going to talk about that as we go through the show. And it's, you know, that the part of that I'm sharing this step four of the process of writing your own story is discovering your limiting beliefs and what that is attached to is very much shows up with how you handle your emotions. When things come up, what is your automatic response? Because you don't have your filter. When you get news of a school shooting, you don't have your conscious filter. You're going to have your reaction. And if you haven't done the work to bring yourself into consciousness, if you haven't done the work to bring yourself into a place of knowing that you're acting from your heart and you're not acting from your program, then you are going to react just the same way. And so what is it? How do you do that? How do you go into this place where you're just angry, where you are, you know, you hear some news that somebody did something that was terrible and our reaction is anger and is, do we want to do something terrible back? What are we going to do with that emotional charge that we now feel in our body? What do you do with that? What do you do when something like that happens? And so when we come back from break, we're going to talk about that, talk about all of the different things that come up. What do you do when those emotions come up? What is it showing you about who you are and how do you move forward when you get news like a devastating situation like this morning's shooting? Yes. Thank you so much. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tom Lombrezo, and I'm here to tell you of my latest book, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. What's it all about? Well, can you imagine you're driving home, like I did 17 years ago, in my Jeep, when an angel comes into my Jeep and tells me what to do. I did it, and it saved my life because a terrible accident ensued seconds later. My life changed dramatically since that day, full of spiritual experiences. I have documented those spiritual experiences in this book so that you can relive them yourself. Perhaps you're going through your own spiritual transformation. If there's any doubt in your mind that there are angels or messages you might get from clouds or that you are a spiritual being as well as a human being, you must buy this book. This book is full of photographs, 375 color photographs, over 278 pages. Of those, 155 uh, photographs are of clouds, clouds that will knock your socks off. So, how do you buy this book? Well, go to my website, www.whenangelstouch.com, whenangelstouch.com, and on the home page, you'll see the, the photograph of the book, and it just says, buy it. So please buy it, it's $25. It's a good bargain for it, what you're getting. And if you need to contact me by email, tom at whenangelstouch.com. And you can see me on Facebook every day at When Angels Touch Facebook. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We've got a great show for you today because we're talking about part four on living on purpose. And I'm here with my co-host, Charlene Hess. And we're talking about the power of our emotions rewriting the script, rewriting our story. And today is a very interesting day. 
uh, in that there was another school shooting. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty charged up myself right now with, with emotion. And so there's, mm-hmm. this is a really great topic for us to be able to see how can we navigate living in this world and how can we live heaven on earth when all of these kinds of things are happening outside in our environment to where we don't feel like victims, where we can right, do right. something positive about it. And that's what Charlene and I are here to um, inspire you with, to move into the processing of emotions and really clearing all of the core wounds from the past so that you can come from a place of a neutral response rather than from a charged response. And uh, Charlene, you were talking before we went to break um, about how you wanted to uh, discuss this subject. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cornelia. Yeah. So, you know, really when something like this happens and we have this emotional charge, you know, why did the, why did the school, why did the school shooter do the shooting? Why does, you know, the post office shooter do the shooting? It's because they have this really intense emotion. They're not processing the emotions that they have in their own body. And so they act it out against somebody else. They have all of this inside of them and they're going to take and they're going to put it out. And a lot of times people's response to that is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put this out. So the poor children that were victims today had nothing to do with them. They were just victims. They had just got caught in it. And so here they had nothing to do with that, but they're now the victims of this situation. And if the person who does the violent crime had the ability to be able to very carefully, because I know that there's a lot of, I mean, this is a very loaded subject and there's a lot of um, cases, you know, with mental illness as well, where, you know, we can just say, oh, if they just felt their emotions, then they wouldn't have done this thing. But the really, the biggest part about it is, is what does this do about you? What is this triggering inside of you? Because we can look at somebody else and we can go through all of these ideas of why did they do what they did, right? And we can look at their childhood. We can look at their environment. We can say, oh, they didn't process their emotions. We can say, you know, we can come up with all kinds of ideas. They were crazy. They're insane. They, you know, were on medication. They were on drugs. But what does that do? So we can figure out what it is that, why they did what they did. But the whole point is, is here we are. We are now left with the results of this act. And that's really what we need to look at is, is what does this do to you? How does this affect you? Yeah. What is this bringing up in you? Right. What is inside of you that this has activated that now needs to be processed because the act is done and now it's ours. It's now ours because we are a witness to it. We are affected by it. We are all affected by what other people do. Yeah. And so we can project it out. We can sidestep it. We can bypass it. By going, oh, it's that person and they did this and they're this terrible person and they did all of this thing. Okay, you have an emotional charge in you. What is that about? What did it trigger inside of you? And that's where the work really happens because it's not going to happen if you just project onto the person that did the thing. Yes, it's terrible what they did. For me, I notice kind of like my natural reaction of what I do when things like this happen is I instantly go to the victim's families. And my heart bleeds and it is, it is just so devastating to me. As I think about the parents losing their child, I instantly go into my mind of what would it be like if I ever lost Austin or Seja and just like instantly I go into this deep sorrow and what is that trigger in me? And so then there's the work, the work is mine to do. And a lot of people may not necessarily like to hear that because we want to stay angry at other people. But here it is. It's yours now. What are you going to do with it? Well, you know, um, it's very well said, Charlene. Um, This is the reason why I wrote my book. Even though I don't have children, I don't have children. So for me, um, that's not that's not something that I that I go to that it could happen to my child. But like even today when it was Santa Fe, um, I know somebody that's in Santa Fe that has a kid, number one. But truly, all the children are my children. And that's Mm -hmm. really the reason why I wrote the book. It's because I care and I give a shit about what happens on this planet. And um, one thing that we don't really uh, 
talk about is emotional processing. When you were saying that, oh, this could be a mental mental health issue, this is a, um, uh, I want to say, an excuse that has been used time and time and time again. It's a mental mental health issue, or we need to str strict, uh, str um, strengthen our gun laws, or we need to do this and we need to do that. Nobody is talking about emotional processing. And that's the reason I did the show that I did in March, because that this is a topic, this is a topic that really needs to be discussed. And all the children in the schools and the, the people in the mm -hmm. doctors, and that are going in for uh, physical pain in their bodies need to know how to process emotions simply because the emotion, the physical body is calling for healing. It's calling mm -hmm. for um, love. It's calling for resolution. And all of it has to do with the power of emotions. Right. We know there's limiting beliefs and the mental body has a lot to do with it. But that is not a painful thing. Changing the limiting beliefs it is not a painful thing. Being a victim is not painful. It's not going to bring you to your knees to where you're going to be, you know, crying. But when you're emotionally processing deep wounding, anger, underneath that anger, there's always truth that's waiting to be exposed. Mm -hmm. Because underneath that anger, when you find out what is it that you're really so angry about, you're going to find that most people say, I didn't know how to communicate my feelings. I feel hurt about something that happened from the past. I feel betrayed. I feel not respected. I feel not honored. I feel not heard. I feel like I can't do anything about anything. Helpless, are, powerless. Helpless, powerless. And these are all victim energies because that's, that's what's present. So, you know, Albert Einstein said, we can't solve the same problem from the same consciousness from where it was created. Yes. So we have to, we have to rise above. And that's the part where I, I get really charged when I, I'm going, why are we still um, wanting to fight war with war? Mm -hmm. And we we now are we are so evolved in consciousness that we don't fight war with war. We fight war with another consciousness, with a different consciousness, with love, with wisdom, not weapons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's um, it's you know it's absolute truth. It's absolute truth what you're saying. And at the same time, I think that that you know that is what we are here to do. That is the work that you have created. That is the work that I am following. That is the work that I know so many amazing light workers, so many amazing people and healers who we are here to heal the planet in this way. And you can do it in a practical way. It's not this woo-woo idea that we can just spiritualize. We can spiritually bypass all of it and say, oh, we just are going to heal it with love. And that's all that there is. And we're just going to love everybody and everything's going to be fine. No, we need to take action. We need to take action and there's there's action that you can take. And in, in my opinion, from where I stand, the action that you can take to change the world is to get clear with yourself, to find out why do you do what you do? What are the active triggers that are inside of you that are making you act outside of consciousness, that are making you act into your programming? Because we can change the world. We absolutely can change the world, but it's going to start with me. And it's going to start with me doing my work on me. And as I do my work on me, then I'm going to affect the people around me. And so I am going to change the world by changing my world. And the way that I change my world is I start by doing the emotional processing in myself. And that's, that's how we're going to make an effect. That's how we're going to change things. And it's not a small thing. It's not, oh, well, it's just this little tiny thing. No, it's huge because the ripple effect is going to be what, makes the change. And so again, back to here, this shooting has happened. What is it bringing up in you? And I want to ask all of the listeners, what does it bring up in you? What has been triggered by this event that needs to be processed? Yeah. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. It's Look good. at that. I mean, Look know, in the mirror. Look at yourself. Yeah. And I, I can just tell you that, that for me, what needs to be processed again is, you know, um, patience, being calm, being the calm in the, because part of the reason why is that I'm, I'm, you know, it, 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 
it triggered me. It makes me want to run and it makes me want to go and go, everybody, we don't have to do it this way. We don't have mm-hmm. to do it like this. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to um, encourage everybody to get my emotional processing technique that's available, my anger management technique, my 21 day peace practice that I've written, all of the wonderful tools that I created. You can email me at radio at corneliastephanie.com and I will send you all of that stuff for free. But the other thing that you can do is you can go to my website at Cornelia Stephanie. Dot com and you can look under um, the home page all the way on the bottom there's a box that says free tools and there is um, a section about emotional processing you can get emotions 101 really read about what emotions are and how to process them and what it is that that you can do because you can do something but again it's like Charlene said it's an inside job the world is an inside job Peace is an inside job. Uh, Love is an inside job. It's all an inside job. And that's how we can become the peace activists that we want to see in the world, be the change we want to see in the world by first being the peace within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her Uh, one-on-one for many years now and even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth after working with her for many years I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach uh, coaching program and it has absolutely been an amazing process I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach. Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. We're back with Charlene Hess and Cornelia Stephanie on the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. And Charlene and I are talking about the power of emotions, rewriting our script, and changing our limiting beliefs. And so, Charlene, take it away. (laughs) Thank you, Cornelia. So, you know, like we were talking about before we went on break, uh, realizing that when something happens in your life, it triggers something inside of you. You have an emotional response to it. And what do you do? 
What do you do with that emotional response? How do you take responsibility for how you're feeling? Because it's not about being the victim. It's not about pointing the finger out to somebody else and saying, they made me feel this way and it's all about them, but taking ownership of what it is that you're feeling and saying, okay, how is this about me? And that's where you are able to start to identify what your belief system is by the way that you act and react. And that's what I mean when I talk about this fourth step in the seven step process. You know, we talked about, you know, getting still, stopping the noise. We talked about the second step of, you know, going in deep into meditation and becoming the observer. We talked about the third step of getting to know the monkeys. Who is it that keeps showing up? Getting to intimately know yourself in a way that all of these different thoughts that come up and you start to recognize behavior patterns. And now the fourth step is, you know, writing your story. So what that means is, okay, now that I know all of these different parts of myself, I see the, the critic that shows up. I see the taskmaster that shows up. I see the saboteur that comes up. I see the little girl or the little boy inside that comes up that's trying to say something. And so the end result of what we're looking to be able to do through all of these steps is to learn how to walk in alignment and to live in peace and to really truly have inner peace, to not to no longer have internal chaos inside your mind when you're making decisions as you're walking through your life so that you can live your life of joy. And so in this process, in this next step about, you know, writing your story is it's like now I've identified what story is mine that's been given to me because of the family of origin that I grew up in. And I grew up in this family. This is the way that things were. And so this is the way that I, this is now how I do things. Well, instead you get to write your own story and decide what do I want my life to look like? And you have to, like, you know, the Einstein quote that you just did, Cornelia, it's like you can't solve a problem from the same place that it came from. So how do, how do you do that? How do you step out of what you know to create? And part of that is, is just having that imagination of dreaming up the life that you want, of really sitting down and looking at what do you want your life to look like? And to really imagine the what would be to you unimaginable. You know, finding different role models or, or people that are living a lifestyle that appeals to you. So for instance, for me, I really, really want to travel. That is such a part of my life existence that I want to have. I want to travel. My daughter right now is in South America. She's traveling for three months. And, you know, I joke around and say, I want to be her when I grow up. And I want to have me as a mom to be able to make it so that <laughs> that can happen. But I can, of course I can travel. And I tell myself, well, I can't travel because of my business, because of I'm, it's location dependent. Well, what if I created a business that's not location dependent? What if I did that? And so part of it is, is beginning with imagining all of the things that you want. Imagining a world where you have all the things, love, connection, relationship, adventure, uh, purposefulness, all of the things that you want to have in your life, you can have. And so as you're starting to write down your story, as you're starting to create your, your new script of this is the life that I want to have, all of the stuff that it's not is going to show up, right? So the reality of I want to live in this big, beautiful house and I want to have a view and I want to manifest this life. And I'm in a place where that's exactly what I'm doing is I'm getting ready to, I'm moving and for a while, I didn't know where I was moving to. I just knew I'm packing boxes and I'm getting ready to move. And I've set it out to the universe that this is what I want. This is the life that I want to have. This is the home that I want to have. And I could feel it in my body of what it would feel to sit at my dining room table, look out my window at my beautiful view. And this is what I want. And so I'm in this place right now. Well, um, I've got, let's see, eight, I've got uh, 10 days to move and my place hasn't shown up yet. But something else has shown up, which is absolutely wonderful and incredible in that I'm going to uh, have a house sitting position with a very, very, very sweet dear friend of mine. And I'm going to be a roommate part of the time and a house sitter part of the time. And it's going to give me an opportunity to be able to just reset and really go in and do some more work because I've hit a place now that I'm walking into empty nest and this whole brand new phase of my life where I realize this whole script that I have written when I started to write my own story back in 2010, 2011, it's now I'm starting a whole new chapter and it's a continuation of the story, but there's all of these blank pages now. And honestly, I don't have a clue. 
I don't know what it's going to be like to not be taking care of two children. I don't know what it's going to be like to not have to work so hard as a single parent with no support to try and keep my kids launched. It's like they're in this place where they're launching and I'm, I'm entering into that place. And so that is the next phase of where I'm going. And I love, I love how you're unfolding it. And I, I love, I love the whole thing about how you just have the blank pages. It's a wonderful, beautiful example, uh, example of living spontaneously and intuitively. But that is not something that just happens by itself. It happens from deep, deep inner work. And you have to really be able to know how to um, allow the spirit to come forth instead right ego running the show and wanting to have everything planned out because the ego is always the one that wants to be safe and wants to have everything yes. in control and, yes. and living the surrendered life is really living a magical life and that's where we're all going it's we're all heading in that way and right. this, this is our new way is living a surrendered life living living a spontaneous life because there's there's so much that we haven't um lived yet that we haven't discovered yet because we haven't given ourselves permission like you said we're so used to working so hard what if it's easy what if exactly. it's really easy right what if it's so easy yes. like it's kind of like the idea of the elephant that has been released and yet the elephant has been on the chains for like you know 20 years or thousands of years and now the chain is off mm -hmm. but the elephant doesn't go anywhere right right exactly so this is where I'm at right now. And so something else has shown up, which it, it is part of what I had manifested when I asked the universe. I said, I would love this or a place that I can house it even better of something where I, that I can house it and um, be able to save up money, you know, for a down payment for a house if that's if I'm going to do that. And, and that's what showed up is um, I have this awesome opportunity, not just to house it, but also to be a roommate to, um, like I said, a very sweet friend of mine and that I'm going to have an opportunity to be, to have that experience of being a roommate. And I'm really excited about this new phase of my life, about embarking on this new journey, this new chapter. So here I have this whole new empty pages that I get to fill. And the thing that I realized as I'm doing this, as I'm packing and as I'm moving, I'm coming across everything that I have had in my whole life. So I came across photographs and letters and so many things of my past life, of my marriage, of um, letters from my mother who has passed away. And wow, talk about emotional processing. This has been such an intense month for me. And the thing that went out the window for me was probably the very thing I should have held on to tightly was the meditation, which I find so humorous because here I am doing a radio show on meditation and how great it is to meditate and how important it is and how it's the very thing to stay connected to yourself. And when I hit that emotional wall of sitting there and looking at these letters that were written to me from my ex-husband, looking at these letters that were written to me from my mother, looking at photos photographs of my children when they were little. And I'm, I am floored with so much intense emotion and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't meditate in that way that I had been meditating. Let me tell you, I was meditating, right? Because I was processing everything that was coming up. I was in that deep thought, but the meditation that I've been doing of like getting to connect with myself and getting to know myself, that went to a screeching halt and instead, I was in this place of deep release, deep, deep release. And there was a part of me that I kept wanting it to hurry up because I've got stuff to do. I've got boxes to pack. I've got to change of address. I've got to move. I've got to get a storage unit. Plus, I'm still working. <laughs> I still got clients to see. I've got to go to the salon. I've got classes to teach. I've got a program for my personal training clients. And I, it's like, this is really inconvenient to be having all of these deep emotions. But the point is, is that it has to take as long as it takes. And that's the part about processing emotions that I think that we want to hurry it up. We want to skip over it. Come on. We got things to do. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And you can't hurry the process. You can't, you can't hurry the grief. You can't rush grief. And no. part of our collective right now is in a deep, deep process of grief because we're stepping from one world, an old world, 
paradigm that is dying and we're moving into a new world. And you, Charlene, looking at all of your stuff and looking at all of your pictures and looking at everything is like making peace with your past mm -hmm. and not stepping off into a completely new world, into a completely yes. new journey, a new paradigm creation, according to writing the script, according to how you want to live with you as the authority. And thank God you said yes to doing this work because through this work, you were able to do it. You're offering everybody um, who wants to have free coaching with you, a 30 minute coaching call yes. and contact you at living whole at Charlene Yes. And go to Cornelia Stephanie.com and there's all kinds of tools and, um, emotional uh, tips that are on my website on the lower left-hand side of the of the website about emotional processing that will also help you. We're going to be right back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show. And I'm here with Charlene Hess, and we are talking about the power of processing emotions. And earlier, before we went to break, Charlene was talking about how um, allowing the emotions to process for however long it takes. And it doesn't matter how long it takes because it's going to take however long it's going to take. And that's really the key is to allow the emotion to move through. And if it takes a day, if it takes two days, if it takes longer than that, it really doesn't matter. But give yourself permission to fully move through that storm, to fully move through that cycle. Um, because through that allowance, the release and the healing and the feel, yes. all of that can happen. And so... Uh, yes. wonderful that it takes how long it's how long it's going to take because you know we've always been conditioned to don't take up too much space hurry up and get on with it you've mm -hmm. got to do you've got stuff to do and um no uh you the power of emotion really allowing yourself to feel and grieve and process it's part of the ascension process and um, yes. that can't be rushed yes and, you know, nothing like a move to bring all that sort of stuff up. You know, it's like moving, you're digging up your roots. And if you think about like repotting a plant, it's like digging up a roots and some of the roots are broken and some of the roots stay in the ground and knowing which, you know, how much of that root ball to bring as you transfer to a new place, as you're repotting, you're putting it into a new area for it to flourish and grow. And I'm in this place where I feel like I have um, picked up my roots and now I've been put into a pot, right? Because I'm I'm going to be um, I'm in a I'm in a transition place where I'm moving to is this transition place of where I'm in a pot while I'm waiting to see where I'm going to be transferred to. Where's my new home going to be? Um, and maybe it's going to be in a pot for a while. I don't know. And that's that's part of the process. Is I don't know. I know what I want to experience. I know how I want to feel. I know the work that I want to do and the effect that I want to have on people. That's what I know that I know that I know. Where that's going to be is what I don't know. Uh, so all I can do is I can just keep visualizing how I want to feel. Visualizing the effect that I'm going to have on the world by the people that I touch. And that's what I do know. And then the rest is going to come into place. But part of it is, is I have to make space for that to happen. And the only way that I can make space for that to happen is to not be holding on to stored emotions, to not be holding on to stored beliefs, to not be holding on to an old story. I can't keep, I can't move forward if I'm constantly looking back. If I'm constantly looking back or moving forward where I'm, I'm holding all this luggage. And so as I'm moving, I'm selling and getting rid of 90% of my stuff. And I am letting go of those boxes of memories, those boxes of memories that I carry around. And I'm asking myself as I'm putting this in a storage unit, like, do I really want to pay to have this stored? Like, do I really need this? What is it about? Why am I holding on to these things? And so there's a few things that I have chosen to keep. And the rest of it. I chose to have a ceremony of release. 
And so I got together with um, two of my very close girlfriends, my, my go-to fun girl and my go-to heart girl. And we got together and we had a big bonfire. <laughs> and I took all of these things, photographs, letters, love letters, pictures, um, cards, all these things. And I uh, put them in the fire one by one. I read each one of them though. And as I read each one, I held on to the feeling that I wanted to hold on to. And I let go of the part of the attachment that I had to it, that I needed to have this physical thing to hold on to, to give me the validation of that. I had this once had this life or this life meant something to me because I'm creating a new life. And so the parts that are still part of that book, because I'm not just tearing pages out of my book and burning them. My story is my story, but it's the one that I'm writing. And so what I was releasing was the story that was put upon me, the story of addiction, the story of abuse, the story of suppression. That was what I let go of. And that's what I put in the fire. And that's what I burned. And the ceremony was so intense and just sitting there and crying with my, you know, with my sisters, their love and their support around me as I'm just releasing. And oh, what a sweet release it was just sitting there at the fire watching it turn into ashes and knowing that I am free, so much freedom. And that's something that I offer to any of you, you know, doing a ceremony. um, I have a little cauldron. It's basically a big giant stock pot that I've made my cauldron that I take out in the backyard. And I'll sometimes write things on sticky notes at full moons and at uh, new moons, and I'll just burn it and just go, okay, this is what I'm releasing. This is what I'm letting go because it's just a ceremony. I also sometimes will go to the beach and I will write in the sand right at the, um, place where the water comes into the, the ocean waves come up so that then as the water comes up and it washes it away in the sand and takes it with it. That's another wonderful release that I do, but that's a great practice that you can do as a part of releasing emotions is crying, talking to somebody who can hold space and not try to fix it or change it. Doing a ceremony where you burn it, where you let it turn to ashes so many different ways of just releasing and letting go and, and knowing what you're letting go of verbally releasing, I am letting go of this. And so now I'm in this place where I have all of this emotional space and now I can start to create something new. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it looks like. And that's okay. It's completely okay to not know the next step to be right where you're at and to be in this step. And so that's also what I help people do. You know, that's the process that I'm going through is what I help other people go through. And so as I am working and building my life coaching business, because I know that that is my primary thing of where I am going is I am building my life coaching business because I have so passionate about helping people to do this work. And so that's part of why I'm offering my free 30 minute uh, coaching sessions. And you can reach me, charlenehess.com is my website. You can read about the the work that I do. You can read the testimonials of people that have worked with me. Send me an email, livingwhole at charlenehess.com. And in the title, put my free session and we can schedule up a, a schedule a call and I can do a free 30 minute session with you of just this process of emotional processing, of release, of meditation, whatever it is that you want to bring and talk about. I'm so thrilled to be able to work with you and to work with you, the listeners and, um, help you get closer to the life that you want to have, help you write your story of the life that you want to live. That's what I'm here to do. And living on purpose, living on purpose. I really, our talk today and also the last three shows that you and I did living on purpose today was part four people can go to your website at charlenehess.com mm-hmm. and they can look under media and there are the other shows so that they can see all the steps to mm-hmm. take thank you for um, listing the steps again in today's talk and helping um, people really step into their their joy their fulfillment, assisting them with rewriting the script, rewriting the story, because we've all come here to assist the earth move into a higher vibrational way of living and being and moving into harmony with nature. And when when there's a, um, any type of uh, war that's going on, it's always to the, the first point of power is always look inside, look inside yes. to see where where is the dis-ease inside 
Where is the discomfort inside and what is this about for me? What am I releasing? What am I letting go of? Uh, when I initially began this work back in 2008, eight nine, I um, called us the Letting Go Tribe because really that is wh who we are. We mm -hmm. are the Letting Go Tribe and we're letting go of 26,000 years of living everything that we are not so that we can move into the new story, the truth of living everything that we are. And that time is now. My name is Cornelia Stephanie. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. You can go to my website at corneliastephanie.com. There's all kinds of free tools and tips. And you can also email me at radio at corneliastephanie.com. Thank you, Charlene Hess. And we'll be back again with you next time. Namaste.